When things are smaller than 83 protons, however, one has to consider the neutron-proton ratio. If you plot out the number of protons versus the number of neutrons for every single nice little isotope, then what you find is that all of the stable isotopes that exist follow this so-called band of stability. They start off where the number of neutrons equals the number of protons, but then they start deviating from that straight line a little bit, going into where the number of neutrons over the number of protons is bigger than one to be in that band of stability. Now, if an isotope is over on this side of the band of stability, it's got too many neutrons. If it's got too many neutrons, it would like to reduce the number of neutrons or increase the number of protons, or maybe do both. What do we know that turns a neutron into a proton? Beta decay. So isotopes that are up here on this band of stability will typically decay by a beta decay, turning some of those excess neutrons into nice protons. Conversely, if we're over this side of the band of stability, then we have too many protons. What do we know that can reduce the number of protons or maybe increase the number of neutrons, just getting us closer to this nice ratio up here for the band of stability? Well, positron decay or electron capture will effectively turn a proton into a neutron. So neutron-proton ratio, all important for those smaller nuclei. The ideal ratio is one that starts off with one to one, but then heads towards having more neutrons than protons. And if species are outside this band of stability, if an isotope is outside this band of stability, if it's got too many neutrons for the protons it's got, it will be radioactive and um, decay via beta decay. If it's on this side, so in other words, too many protons for the number of neutrons it's got, then it will undergo positron decay or electron capture. Now, we could talk about the particular ideal ratio. Um, starts off as one to one, and then it moves to about 1.1 to one, 1.1 to one neutrons to protons and so on. And then by the time you're up to the really heavy stable elements, it's about 1.5 to one. In other words, one and a half times as many neutrons as protons for the isotope to be stable. But they say nice fast way in which you can, for a particular element, determine the ideal ratio. So let's think about oxygen here. Okay, oxygen down here, atomic number of eight, right? Its atomic mass, this relative mass, which is the average of all the isotopes, is 16. Now, we're looking at stable isotopes will be in this band of stability here. And what we're saying is that those stable isotopes average out to having a mass of 16. So why don't we just say that 16 is the good mass for them to have. So that means we've got eight neutrons and eight protons. In other words, a one to one ratio. So down here where oxygen is to be found, one to one is the nice ratio. Let's go up to chromium. Right, chromium's up here, 24, and you can see it's deviating a little bit from that nice one-to-one -one ratio. The band of stability is above the one-to-one -one ratio. Well, looking at it, chromium, um, the average of all its isotopes, the weighted average is 52. So why don't we just say that 52 chromium is the ideal nice isotope of chromium? Well, we got 52 total mass, 24 protons, thus leaving us 28 neutrons. The ratio of 28 to 24 is 1.17 to 1. So in other words, as we expected, seeing it up here, its ideal um, ratio, its best isotope, a little bit more on the neutron side of a 1 to 1 ratio. And that, of course, is what we're seeing as we're going on up. Let's go a little bit heavier. Ruthenium, 44, so up here, and you can see that its band of stability is significantly away from the 1 to 1 ratio. Ideal isotope for ruthenium would be 101. A 101 ruthenium would have 44 protons, subtract 44 from 101, and you get 57 neutrons. So 57 neutrons, 44 protons. It's nice stable ratio, 1.3 to one ratio. So as we said, about one to one, one to point one to one, one point two to one, one point three to one, one point four to one, and up here at the heaviest ones, it's almost exactly one point five to one is the nice ratio.
Now, knowing this will allow you to predict for a particular isotope whether you think it's going to be stable. In other words, whether it's close to the band of stability. And the quick and dirty way to say is the isotope of a particular atom stable is how close is it to the ideal mass. Let's just exemplify with ruthenium. We've already said that ruthenium 101 is ideal. It's nice and stable, right? Because its mass is close, well, pretty much bang on, to the nice mass for ruthenium. And this mass representing the weighted average of all the stable isotopes, therefore represents the best mass for an isotope to have to be the ideal ratio for ruthenium, which happens to be 1.3 to one. So 101 ruthenium stable. What about 100 ruthenium? Well, 100 is pretty close to the nice mass, isn't it? So I would say 100 is going to be stable, really close to that nice mass of 101. How about 108? Well, 108 is kind of a fair way away from the nice 101. Now, what's far enough away depends on the different elements. But when you're sort of seven or eight away, I'm going to say that's definitely too far away. Now, what it is, is its mass is too high. Its mass is bigger than the ideal ratio of 101. Well, it hasn't changed the number of protons. They're all 44. Thus, 108 must have too many neutrons to have too high a mass. So I predict it's unstable. And I would predict that it goes via beta decay. The ratio is too big. The mass is too big for the ideal mass. So too many neutrons, beta decay. Conversely, go down to 92 ruthenium. Well, 92 is eight less than the idea, nine less than the ideal of 101. So therefore the ratio there is too small. So I would say it's unstable because if the ratio is too small, there's not enough neutrons, right? We don't have enough of a mass to get up to the ideal. So if there's not enough neutrons, there's too many protons. How do we get rid of protons and turn them into neutrons? Positron decay, which of course could also be electron capture. So number one factor, nucleus is too big. Number two factor, have a look at the proton, neutron, neutron to proton ratio. That's an ideal value for a particular element. And that ideal value can be revealed in the periodic table by thinking about just the atomic mass in the periodic table, which represents the stable nuclei. If the atomic mass is, or the mass of an isotope is close to that atomic mass, it's probably stable. If it's too far away, it's probably unstable. If it's much bigger than the atomic mass on the periodic table, it will probably undergo beta decay. If it's much smaller, it will probably undergo positron decay. And those are the two really big important aspects.